evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It's Wednesday evening, which means one thing. It's match preview show time and ahead of our long trip north at the weekend to take on Pete Wilde's Barrow. I'm pleased to say that for, I think, now the third time. So he does get to keep the proverbial match ball. I'm joined by Taylor. So uh, first of all, Taylor, appreciate you coming on. I understand you've just walked in from work and <laughs> want some dinner. So we're going to get on with this pretty sharpish. But you're good. You must be really pleased with the season so far. Yeah, thank you for having me on again. Um, yeah, can't complain. Really good start to the season. Um, probably better than what most of us would have anticipated. Um, actually wanted to kick on from last season where uh, we finished just outside the playoffs. It was a really good season, first season under Wild. Uh, naturally, you always want to kick on and and try and improve on what you've done. Um, but I certainly didn't anticipate sort of the extent in which we've done so so far. Yeah, it's been a brilliant start. And, and looking at recent form as well, that's absolutely rock solid as well. So if we look at your form first, being the home side over the last six, Salford at home, nil nil, Morecambe at home, one one nil, Bradford, you went to him, one two one, Then saw off Crawley at home by a single goal. Went to Colchester and won handsomely by four goals to one. And most recently in the league, saw off Walsall at home by two goals to nil. So it's 16 points from the last 18 available, which is absolutely ridiculous form. Sees you sit in third position in the Skybet League 2 table with 37 points from 20 games. Gilles has been a bit in and out recently. It's it's three wins and three defeats in the last six in the league. Then wins have come against Swindon, Salford and Wimbledon, but the three reverses have been against Newport, Wrexham and Tranmere Rovers. So nine points from 18 in the same period for, for Stephen Clements' men. And we currently sit on 31 points in seven. So two sides that are having good seasons. I think Gilles have probably been a bit more up and down in terms of, of how we started the campaign, but obviously very contrasting results in the FA Cup last weekend. You got um, knocked out by National League South side and our dear rivals, Maidstone United, whereas we saw off Charlton by two goals to nil. Will that have too much of a bearing on the league on the league form or, or Saturday in particular, or do you just think it was one of them days? Did you make lots of changes? No, it was a, quite a consistent side. Um, I think, yeah, I'd probably say it was our strongest side that we could have named. Um, I just think it's yeah one of those days where one side just obviously playing out the skin to try and get into the third round, um, and just another side that obviously want to get in the third round, but just we're up to it. Um, we lost one hell of a strike to win it. In fairness, as well, I've seen the winner. It's a really good goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Maidstone were just a bit more sort of up for it. Um, the better side on the day can't complain. So hopefully, it's just one of those. Things where it was just a one-off and we can bounce back and, and continue the good league form. I suppose it means if you're looking for a silver lining, there's there's no distractions for Barrow now, is there? It's just sole oh, focus yeah, right. is, is, is League 2. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we're not in the EFL trophy either, so um, it is just a straightforward league campaign now. Absolutely no distractions. Fingers crossed there's not going to be too many postponements uh, between now and the end of the season, so... It's just a case of uh, cracking on. Yeah, and, and and cracking on, you have been, and you've already touched on it. You said right at the start of the show, and it, you, you took the words right in my mouth, that surely the start of the season has exceeded all fans' expectations. I mean, we all do our season previews and our predictions, and I know Gabe Sutton was, was very positive regarding Barrow, and I was slightly the other way. I thought other teams might improve or to put it more bluntly, buy their way past Barrow because you don't have a big budget and there's a lot of sides with a lot of spending power. Now. So I think that's kudos to everyone involved with the football club, Pete Wilde, the players, the coaching staff, and it, it makes it almost even more um, impressive what you're doing at the moment. Small ground, small small fan base, so bloody in the noses consistently of the bigger boys. And the home form is, is absolutely phenomenal. Not lost at, at Holker Street this season in the league. Played 9-1-5, drawn four. Scored 11, conceded five and, and haven't conceded in the last four games on your own patch. So that's that's the task that, that we're going to be coming up against at the weekend, isn't it? Yeah, obviously. I think Barrow's always been one of those places where you want to... Every club wants to make the, the home ground a fortress. But mm. I think a lot of a lot of clubs come to Barrow and go, it's a long trip up to Barrow or don't want to go to Barrow. So I think we've, got to, we've played on that and we've made it a really difficult place to come to. Um, obviously, we the pitch isn't fantastic. Um, we're playing on it week in, week out, so we're sort of getting to grips with it a little bit mm. more than size that are coming here. 
Um, that's a, a typical complaint that we're hearing at the moment is the pitch. So um, we are making it a difficult place to come to. We're, we're really buying into making this a difficult place to come to. Um, the pitch is not not fantastic and we're, we're making the most of what we can. And um, as I say, making it a difficult, difficult place. Um, but obviously we're, we're backing it up away from home as well. And uh, we had quite a lot of away games to start the season. Um, not many home fixtures at all. So um, we we got off on a good foot in terms of getting good points and good results on on the road. And we've really made Polka Street a difficult difficult place to come to, and really backed up with a lot of lot of wins. Yeah, and, and any good side that if they're not conceding goals, then you're giving yourselves a chance in games because if you don't concede, you're not losing the football match, and then you only need one and. Yeah, it's, it's like I say, it's a phenomenal record, and it it shows us as Jules fans and and the Jules coaching staff and the players as well. Obviously, what we're going to be up against, and to be honest, we'll, I mean, we'll get to score predictions in a little while, but I'd, I'd happily take a point and run if it was offered to me right now. Um, just looking through your squad, and I mean this in a way with the most respect, and I think I said the same to you last season. It's not a squad where you go, players jump off the page at you, like. It, for me, it's just a very well balanced squad full of good pros that know their job. Um, you've got good competition in, in, in all over the pitch, um, and it looks to me like it's a case of if, if someone comes out the side because they're injured or suspended, you've got someone of equal ability that comes in and does exactly the same role, which which is what you want. Um, you've got, I think it's eight players have scored at least twice in the league already this season, um, which is, I think. Fair to say, it's good. You want to be sharing the goals around. You're not relying on one or two, but there are two that that stand out a little bit more. And and I think it's fair to say that that forward players get the headlines, um, rightly or wrongly. Um, that's Emil Aqua and, and Dom Telford. I thought Dom Telford was an unbelievable signing. Again, with the most respect intended for a, a club of your size in the summer, I think it was one everyone sort of looked up and went, "Poor oh, Barrow mean business here." Um. And he's not been prolific, but just how much of an impact of, of Aqua and Telford had? Because they, they come from very different backgrounds. We know Telford came off of the back of a 30-goal season a couple of years ago with Newport. Crawley is Crawley. Um, so I don't think you can really look too much into his form there. But he's a good player at the level, and he's backed that up with numbers. Aqua slightly different coming out of non-league from Maidenhead. But he's your top scorer in the league. He's got five. Not say neither have been like ridiculously prolific, but have they, what have they added to Barrow in terms of your threat at the top end of the pitch? Yeah, obviously completely different players in terms of the player style. Obviously, Aqua is a bit more of the big man. Uh, Tel Telfer's more of sort of the the poacher, gets himself in the box, gets himself on the end of crosses, low balls into the box, uh, you know, little tap ins. Um, but Aqua's brought a sense of being able to play a bit more direct. Mm -hmm. giving us a bit more of a second option um, when things aren't sort of working um, in terms of sort of playing it free, we can sort of be a bit more direct, um, use them to bring the ball down, use them to, to be a menace really, to hold the ball up, try and get the ball forward um, he's immensely strong on the ball um, you know, for, for someone at his height and the strength he's got, he's very good with the ball at his feet at the same time um, which always impressed me um, mm -hmm. he's, he's He's got a lot of attributes that make him a good football league player. So it's no surprise that obviously he now finds himself in, in the football league. Um, he sort of he played very well last season at Maidenhead, mm -hmm. but obviously it's a completely different ball game stepping up into League Two. And I think he's he's done immensely well. Um, straight away, uh, the very first few minutes we saw him, and we saw exactly what he was going to bring to the side. Um, and he's he's just kicked on amazingly. Um, I, cannot fault him in any way, shape or form how he's played this season. Uh, Telford obviously started off a bit slowly and um, obviously was integrated into the side a little bit, obviously not straight him, um, came off the bench now and again, didn't really make too much of an impact. Um, eventually sort of saw his minutes increase. Again, didn't necessarily work out at first, but he finally got himself off the mark against Forest Green and he's really kicked on from there. I think a lot of people were saying he just needs the first goal and he'll kick on. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of those players where he's got the goal scoring ability to show that he's more than good enough at this level. So it was just a case of getting that first goal and kicking on and that's exactly what he's done. Um, he's playing a lot more with confidence now. But again, he brings a completely different 
aspect to the side as to what Aqua does. Um, so it's good to have a, a good balance, which I feel that we we lost a lot last season. It was very much a case of we didn't necessarily have the, the focal point, what Aqua brings. We, it was more a case of a, a few smaller players that were just going to get themselves about and didn't necessarily, necessarily have sort of a plan B, Where whereas this season we do, we have a couple of different options that we can bring on and, and really change a game where we need to. Yeah, and the reason I asked was because, Taylor, you had, I think there was, I mean, when we spoke towards the end of last season, there was, you were still talking of an outside chance of the playoffs. I mean, you'd have had to have gone one hell of a run and you was relying probably on other teams dropping points, but you then blanked in five of seven at the end of the campaign. So that that was what sort of instigated me to ask the question because you've clearly become a better side, a more rounded side. And like you say, with someone like Telford, he reminds me a bit of Macaulay Bond that we've got, that he seems like a streaky player. If he gets one or two, he might go and get six or seven on the bounce. And and, and we're still hoping for the same sort of thing from, from Macca. And he scored in the cup last week. Um, so fingers crossed there. Yeah, but Telford for me seems to be the player as well that, like you say, if he gets a run of minutes, he could go and suddenly he'll double his tally in a month or something like that. And it's, I mean, it's great to see because... Um, there are a lot of big teams in in the division that have got spending power, and I suppose you have to include us in that now. Not as much as your your Wrexhams and your Stockports, granted. And aside from Saturday and the reverse fixture, I hope that the Barrow do continue to thrive um, because it's it's a brilliant story. Um, we have to talk about Pete Wild, um, not to try and shed too much light on what a brilliant job he's doing because you don't want him to be poached, and that and that was the fear when we spoke six months ago. Um, how high is his stock now? It, it must be ridiculously high because you was very impressed with what you saw when we spoke in April, I think it was. And like you say, he's just gone from strength to strength and you've just gone from strength to strength with him over the last six, seven, eight months. Yeah, we, we've started to see a lot more of what he can bring. Um, I think last season we were quite limited in terms of what we could do because we didn't necessarily have the the squad to, to mm. back up what he wanted to do. I think that's why we saw a drop off towards the back end of last season. I think just the minutes caught up to a lot of players. We didn't have the ability to facilitate changes um, and have a squad to rotate. It, so it was the same squad week in, week out. And I think that's why we saw sort of a drop off towards the end. So obviously now that he's been able to bring in a few more players to really bolster the ranks and have competition for places. And when we've seen injuries, we've been able to replace them adeptly. Um, I think we're starting to see a lot more of what Pete Wilde is about and what he can do. Um, and naturally, we're seeing a lot more interest in him. He's being linked to various jobs. I've, I've heard he was linked with Rotherham at one point. Um, so it goes to show that even in the in the second tier, he's now being mentioned. So I think that speaks volumes about where his stock is at the moment. Um, of course, we, we want to keep hold of him for as long as we can. Um, I'm confident that we're going to see it through until the end of the season, that we won't lose him. Um, he keeps mentioning a project, and I don't think he wants to leave that project, mm -hmm. regardless of what comes along at the moment. It is a, obviously a something in the back of everybody's heads that that time will eventually come, um, and they'll move on. And I've, Obviously, nothing but... I wish you nothing but the best when that does happen. Um, but as it stands, I'm so in I'm that positive. sense, is is promotion massively key to how this project continues? Because I'd imagine if you drop out the playoffs or you don't go up for whatever reason, clubs come calling, then maybe Pete Wilde might be tempted, especially if it's championship, because that's a two divisional jump. But I suppose if you get promoted this season, you're almost giving the power back to the club, aren't you? In the sense mm. that he is progressing his managerial career at the same time as the club itself. Yeah, I think, obviously, he's been quite clear on what his stance is in terms of where he expects the club to be. And mm -hmm. I think if we were to achieve promotion this season, then we're a step ahead of where he's hoping to be. Um, I think next season was where he's hoping to push on and, and try and push a promotion, if not achieve it. So mm -hmm. if we can do it this season, then we're ahead of the curve. And and obviously, it, it, that then begs the question as to does he stay on and, and, and go from there? But I think it really does depend on where we are this season. Um, I think if we do get playoff places and there's a chance that we don't, obviously, say we don't get promoted, if we get the playoffs and don't get promoted, then 
it makes a question does he want to stay on and and try and finish the job or but again it's nobody knows other than him um at the moment but I'm hoping that as I say I'm confident that he's going to see this season through but it's just a case of where we go from there is he going to stay on and and finish the job and try and get us promoted if we don't go up this time about or is he going to move on and and further his career which no one would begrudge him at all but no not at all of course from, from our perspective we want to well. stay absolutely of course yeah and but yeah it's, it's a phenomenal job whichever way you look at it and I suppose it's just a case of enjoying the ride until it until that ride ends I guess absolutely in terms of more immediately, obviously Saturday afternoon, three o'clock will be will be kickoff time. Um, what what can we expect for, from Barrow in terms of system and and potential lineup? What would you think the eleven would be come Saturday afternoon? Yeah, I don't think we're going to see too many changes from what it has been over the last sort of few weeks. I'm not shocked you said that. <laughs> um, obviously, if regardless of what happened last weekend, I think we're just going to kick on and continue from. From where we left off in the league, um, just continue in the same vein. Hopefully, um, it will be the three-five-two, um, mm-hmm. that we've been playing this season. Um, the defense has been absolutely outstanding. I think we've got the best defensive record in the league, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Can't be far off. I'm just looking at your home record alone over the last few weeks is is ridiculous. I say you conceding what is it? It's round about half a goal a game on your own patch, yeah. and, and you've been solid enough on the road. So yeah, again, but, <laughs> yeah, to I've... everyone involved. Yeah, I'm thinking, I think we've got the best defensive record, if I'm not wrong. So, obviously, it, we'll, we'll stick with that same defence, I would imagine, the same back three. Um, Canavan, Ray and Chester have been outstanding. Obviously, mm-hmm. Chester is the only question mark there because he's only contracted to stay until January. So, obviously, we'll be hoping to try and extend that for the rest of the this season. This is James Chester, isn't it? Former Aston Villa yeah. and whole centre half, yeah. Yeah, so we did um, immense work to, to get him in to begin with. Um for him to drop down into League Two, uh, which he wasn't intended on doing, so I'm led to believe. Um, but he obviously enjoyed training with us here and decided <laughs> that he was going to commit to a, a half-season deal. So hopefully we can get him for the remainder, because if we do, then that back three has been outstanding. And mm-hmm. if we can try and keep that going on for as long as we can, then, then that'd be great. Um, obviously, we'll have, have the wing-backs um, that sort of play like a, either you can either say it's a five or a three, and then obviously they push forward and back. Um, that can change depending on obviously fitness and various other things. Um, David Worrell's come back into the side; he's been playing there, so I'd imagine that he might stay in that role uh, mm-hmm. with Elliot Newby on the other side. And then obviously we've got the the midfield um, of Spence, Got, um, Campbell, um. And then obviously it's it's just a case of who's up front and at the moment Aqua Telford seems to be the preferred two, but we've seen Whitfield playing over the last few weeks as well. So it just speaks volumes of where we're at in terms of competition for places that it's difficult. I was going to, to say there's the there's two names you've mentioned there. James Chester, obviously, a phenomenal signing at the level for Barrow. And then Ben Whitfield was being raved about last season, but has been probably spending more time on the bench this term. So it says yeah. that, that that's where the evolution and the improvement is coming. If you can afford to have a Ben Whitfield on the bench now, that's that's brilliant from Barrow's point of view. Um and you can never have too many good players, can you? Um in terms of Gilles, I think there's probably only one real doubt, and I think that's going to be Ethan Coleman, unfortunately. He came off after about half an hour with a what looked like a hamstring strain against Charlton, so I'd imagine Saturday's going to come too soon, which is a real shame because he's been brilliant over the last... Well, he's been brilliant all season, to be fair. Um, I know Johnny Williams came off as well, but that was more a whack to the mouth that they couldn't stop from bleeding, so I'd hope he'd be available. Um, so I can't see Gilles making too many changes either because of the fact that there's been yeah. no midweek game. So for me, it'd be Jake Turner in goal. Similar to yourselves, I think the, the defence would be exactly the same. There's no reason to change it. So for me, it'd be Robbie McKenzie, Maxima, Connor Masterson and, and Scott Malone from right to left. would imagine Dom Jeffries would come straight back into the side because I think he was rested yeah. last weekend in the Cup. So he'd replace Coleman. So he'd be one of a middle three with Timmy Dieng and George Lapsley. Connor Mahoney missed the Charlton game with a knock, but Stephen Clement said very confident that he'll be available to play this week. And for me, he has to start because I think he's got nine goal contributions this season um, on loan from Huddersfield. So I'd bring him in on the right. 
I'll keep Johnny Williams on the left, which is probably a little bit harsh on Jaden Clark, who set up the first goal last weekend. Um, and I can't see any reason to, to change Macaulay Bon after scoring the first goal. So that would be my 11 for Jules. Again, we're not sure in terms of exact availability because we're a day before the press conference has come out. But I can't see there being too many issues for the Jules. So, again, similar to yourselves, if, it, if it's not broken, don't fix it and that type of thing. Um, final question, Taylor, and you know what's coming. Um, and I think I know what your answer is going to be as well. Score prediction. It'll be so fun. Obviously, um, I've been watching Jules over the last sort of couple of months, and it's it's difficult to gauge where they're at. Mm -hmm. so one minute they'll come out with a great result, and then the next, I'm like looking, I'm like, oh, that's not fantastic. Um, so it's difficult to sort of gauge as to where they're at. Um, but obviously, I'm confident in our home form. We're confident in our abilities at the moment. So hopefully, it's a case of another three points for us. I'd probably go for a, a one nil win. I'm confident that we can maintain a clean sheet but as I say you seem to be somewhat of a, a Jekyll and Hyde side it's difficult to sort of gauge as mm. to where you are so I'm not sure what to expect No you're spot on it's I mean, the away form's frustrating like we won our first three games on the road without conceding at the start of the season went to Stockport, Crawley and Sutton and then I think we'd lost six of the last seven so our away form's the very opposite of your home form which makes it difficult to predict a win but if we turn up and play like we did against Charlton or if we turn up and play like we did at home to Salford, then we'll give you a game. Mm. But if we roll over like we did at, at Wrexham when we conceded inside a minute or gifted three goals at Tramia, then you'll beat us comfortably. So, And then you chuck into the mix that Stephen Clements is trying to still implement his ideas and, and the way he wants us to play. So I can't disagree. It, it's tough to work out what side's going to turn up. My head says that you probably win it, but my heart says that I'd be very happy with a point and I'd take a one all and run all the way back down to Kent if I was going, but I'm not. So I'm going to say heart one all, head one nil Barrow, the same. Yeah. Just because your, your home form's phenomenal, as is your form full stop. So, Well, I'm hoping that you're right in terms of the win. <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, as always, mate, it's been a real pleasure having a chat with you and I appreciate you coming and straight after work. So thank you very much. Jules fans, Barrow fans, if you're still watching at this point, you know what I'm going to say. It's a big thank you. So please keep doing all that you do, liking, subscribing, retweeting, sharing, commenting and doing all that jazz. Um, as I've already said, not travelling to Holker Street this weekend. It's a bit too far for me. Um, two and a half weeks from Christmas. Um, so we'll be back hopefully Sunday with Reese to do a match day review show. Um, and as I said a few days ago, still trying to sort out another Jules in the Blood chats to with a Jules legend. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for that one. I'm just trying to pencil in a date for that individual. But as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And up the Jules.